Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to look like that. Guys, welcome back. And I gotta tell you right now, you're gonna wanna buckle up because you see, I just got a phone call from our very own Jackknife Jim. You guys all remember Jackknife, right? One of the most accident prone, hardworking, talented guys on the team. Well, he's been down at his family farm in Fillmore, Utah the last little bit, helping them finish up the hay uh, cut and hauling and basically all the farming for the year. They're wrapping it up. He just called to let me know that one of their hay trucks is stuck. And when he says stuck, he means ridiculously buried along with another piece of equipment that's down there. I didn't really get the details on that, but basically what we're doing is we're loaded up, got the Kenworth loaded down with our recovery vehicles. They've tried pulling it out with their farm tractors. They're not having any luck, which is why we got to get some winches down there and get ready for what could possibly be a very difficult recovery. We're talking like close to a hundred thousand pound semi truck completely buried in the mud in the middle of nowhere to pull from. So buckle up because this will be interesting. Guys, I gotta share with you a little secret. Should we share? No, don't share a secret. Uh, Fillmore Fried Chicken. Yeah. That's what you do. You don't share secrets. I share secrets with my friends. But there are these I, feel like, are friends. Yeah, I feel like you share. We've done this a number of times, but I should have noticed though. <laughs> if you're ever cruising through Central Utah and you come to a town called Fillmore, which is where we're at, which is where Jack Knight Jim is from, the very northernmost exit to the town, I can't remember what exit number it is. I'll try it's to find 167. it. 167. But there's a Chevron here. At the Chevron, they have a hot case of fried chicken, and it's safe to say. It's the best fried chicken I've ever had. And I'm talking anywhere. Hunter, is it good fried chicken? Best gas station, at least. I don't oh, know if it beats no, grandma's no, good the best one. chicken, period. Ooh, he's putting it up against grandma's, though. That's a... Like his grandma? I don't know. Yeah. Well, never had his grandma's chicken, I wouldn't know. Start the clock guys we're starting the clock right now we're gonna play the same game as last time we're gonna have you drop a comment below before we get started on this recovery and take a wild guess how long it's gonna take without going over if you go over you're completely disqualified it's whoever's the closest or right under it or you know smack dab like last time on the excavator cover it was like four hours and 32 minutes so the person who guessed four hours and 32 minutes was the winner so guys drop your comment below and whoever gets closest you get a big fat prize we just met up with uh, Jim and his brother Dan and uh, over there at their farm, and we're now following them to where the truck is stuck. Um, supposedly, it's really buried. I don't, uh, I don't know the exact location of where it's at, but if it's out in one of these big fields that's wet and recently tilled, it's going to be a nightmare, which I can't wait for. So, follow them, see where they'll take us. What's up, Bladeheads? Today we're testing out the Kamikoto knives on my new YouTube channel that I like to call Fruit Bootin'. That's where I just take simple fruit like this, take the cleaver, gone. See ya. If you're not impressed, see that watermelon? You ready? Stop. Gone. Dead. You thought that was cool? Check out the pumpkin. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, what are you doing right now? We need to shoot this Kamikoto ad. I'm shooting the Kamikoto ad for my new YouTube channel. Fruit Boot. Wait, 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 wait. Fruit Boot with Kamikoto Hold on. Tell me you weren't about to cut a coconut with these super high end kitchen knives. Well, yeah, I'm almost there. You want to do the coconut? Do you realize how nice these are? Yeah. <laughs> do you, you understand see how nice are? they are? 
All right, guys, listen. The reason why I'm a little reluctant to have this savage cut through a freaking coconut with this knife is because this is one of the nicest knives you can get. Some fun facts you should know about the Kamikoto. Over 800 years worth of Japanese technology and experience has gone into building this blade. Second, they're made using only Japanese source steel from like the most high-end steel mills in the world. Japanese steel is a big deal. After that, they come in this ridiculously awesome ash wood box. So when I got this, I was like, oh, that's nice. They packaged it for us, you know, really neat. Nope, turns out this is how they package it for everyone. So it makes a great gift. Guys, right now, if you want to be able to buy one of the nicest knives in the world, all you got to do is click the link in my description below. Go to kamikoto.com forward slash heavy D sparks. Use the promo code heavy D sparks at checkout. And guess what you're getting? 50 bucks off, literally the nicest knife you can buy. But this leaves us with one final item of business. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Blade Blade it. No, it's cut a coconut. Are you ready? Yeah. Look how clean that cut is. I know. I need you to do this one. Oh, you should do it. All right, guys, so we just rolled into uh, Fillmore, Utah. This is uh, Jack Knight Jim's hometown. And this is where his family still have the farm. In fact, all of this is their farm. Uh, we just barely pulled up. They're still out in the field somewhere where we're going to meet them. Basically, we're just getting the GoPros all rigged up, getting all of our camera gear ready so that when we get to the recovery, we can just get straight to it. But uh, guys, this is, this is a nasty one. From the pictures I've seen and from what Jim has explained to me, We've got one very, 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 very seriously stuck uh, semi-truck in a very precarious spot. But as you can see, we brought uh, Kenworth, obviously, pulling our Craftsman 54-foot uh, paper special trailer, which, by the way, best purchase I've ever made. Craftsman trailers, that thing is legit. Then we got the Sisu Nasu on his second recovery mission ever. The reason we brought this is because where this vehicle is stuck is really flat, smushy farmland, which is notorious for tire vehicles getting stuck in. That means we're stuck. That pisses me off. Like even tractors get stuck out there. So we got this to hopefully do some pulling. I don't know how much pulling it's gonna do. And then obviously we brought the five ton wrecker with all of its winches working, front winch, rear winch. We brought a bunch of slings, bunch of cables, bunch of extra rope. And uh, we also brought our second semi truck. This guy right here, um, either Diesel Dave or myself or Jack Knight Jim has got to run all the way down to Vegas, Vegas! <laughs> and pick up uh, some new tractors that are coming from Sandy. So fourth look in the mini excavator, which we'll ride here on the low boy and uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll. So this truck is also on hand to help it be like an anchor or if it needs to haul any stuck or broken equipment out. We're pretty much ready to go. And uh, it's gonna be interesting, so see what happens. <laughs> Jimbo, so not just the truck. No, we, we, we gave it a solid effort to try and get it out. The problem is this ground looks dry. That's why I didn't pull the truck on it. Yeah, but like you get down there like six, eight inches and it just goes to the bottom. Yeah. And that main line must have been leaking for the last just yeah, a I've noticed few months. So the, the well's up there and it runs to this pivot that goes this way and then it runs down this fence down here. And so it's been leaking out here for who knows how long, yeah. kind of underground. And uh, yeah. Real quick introduction here. You guys already know Jackknife Jim. This is his family farm. And this is his older, younger, younger brother. younger brother, Dan. Dan farms down here full time. So Dan, this is your truck, right? It's my truck and my load of hay. Yeah. And this year, that hay is worth a lot of money. I know. How many tons you got on there? There's about 30 ton on oh, there. Oh, that's some money. Yeah. Yeah, hay is at a premium right now. So obviously the longer these guys are stuck, the worse off it is because they could be moving hay. All right, well, let's go take a look. Do you think you got 30 tons of hay on there and the truck and trailer empty is probably another? Yeah, you're pushing 80 ton or 80,000 pounds. So you're, you know, you're a good 40 ton. All right. Just... And uh, the tricky part out here is uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff to anchor to like steel fence posts, yeah. tumbleweeds. Yep. 
So and, there's not uh, one stout tree or rock inside, is there? Telephone pole. Telephone pole. It's, it's far. This is, uh, this just got really interesting. So as you can see, 80,000 pound fully loaded semi truck buried. Jim says that the muck right here is like literally three, four, five, six feet deep. Uh, even though it looks like it's dry, like you'll sink in there. As you can see, the loader did. Uh, loader's probably what, a 30,000 pound machine? Oh boy. And, and on top of all that, we have nowhere to really pull from. We can pull from some of these dry spots, but we need anchorage. So we might have to get creative with the anchor solutions out here today. But yeah, we'll see. We're gonna start running rope and see what happens. Jim and his brother Dan trying to feed the cows and they took the hot route. Must have been a shortcut or something, got their truck stuck. Pretty deep. Yeah, I got uh, brother Dan just alone me as a pair of waders because uh, apparently the mud's going to come up to mid thigh. I don't want to get my jorts dirty. These are my church jorts. Well, time to get this party started. Here's our game plan. We're basically gonna take the big spool of cable, run it out here to a dry patch, um, the dry spot we can find, somewhere where we can kind of set up the five ton and anchor it and get the winch lines all ran out. And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll probably start with uh, the loader actually first, move it and then move on to the semi. So. We're gonna try the Yankum rope first. Just giving her the old Onion. rub and tug. We're gonna use the biggest Yankum rope we have, which is like a two and a half inch rope. It's so thick and heavy that it literally almost takes two people to just move to it. To rub it and tug it. To rub it and tug it. So we're gonna hook around the front bucket of this old loader. We gotta be careful because we just wanna tug the shit out of it, but at the same time, old loader parts. Not tear it down. Yeah, we don't want to tear it down. They don't make, they don't make these anymore. There's, there ain't nothing stopping you from that. <laughs> Toothpick. <laughs> Make sure when you're in there, put the bucket as low as you can. The forks up, bucket down. Roll it back, just down. Oh man, we're burning into my 17 minute guess already. That was impressive. That was I was talking about the loader starting without we any starting still got fluid. 15 minutes before. Okay, <laughs> where do you think we're at right now? That took 46 seconds. I'm like, no, I bet you. No, I bet you we're beginning. 20 minutes in. 11. 10:34 as this moment. On, loader out. This is the the part where we got to be careful because we get one of our trucks stuck, then it sucks. So. Now the problem is we got count. like a good 80 yards. So yeah. Jim, who washes this? Slop. Hunter. Dude, I'm here Thanks, for the next two weeks. So you're here for two weeks. <laughs> is there like a river coming from West Virginia the next two weeks? Is there a river we can drive to? All right. You want to put the anchor up or on the cable? Yeah. I kind of want to try pulling it with the, the loader cane. Maybe optimistic, but maybe it'll work. That was awesome. No points, so it's just gonna rip the bumper off, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you break it, you buy it, guys. Well, you shouldn't have gotten stuck, man. Well, 
Why did you come to pull it out? <laughs> but you do need a nice Mack truck. This thing's a powerhouse. It'll pretty much lift this uh, tire off the ground when you romp on it. Thinking about entering it into truck pulls. So if it doesn't have AC, that's the only problem. Break Lever. it, you buy, break it, you buy it. <laughs> Dang it. You gonna roll, Dave? I'm gonna roll, man. I'm gonna roll. Yeah, we'll be golden. There's this one on the roof of the CC as well. You can maybe double up. They break it, they fall from that high? All right, you gonna be in the truck? Yeah, hold on, it takes like 45 minutes to air up. <laughs> like half the work is walking through here, huh? It really is. <laughs> I've been in some deep mud before, but this is exhausting. What are you doing right now? Chance of that. Where am I? We're here I trying to get trucks unstuck. Nah, we're waiting for that truck to air up, and I tried giving sleeves a chance today, and every time I tried giving sleeves a chance, they burn me. And I'm all sweaty, and I hate it. So the I'm cutting my sleeves off. Burn you, Dave. No. This is the Fillmore. I've already seasoned sun. my farmer tan to this. That right there. Just that would have been. Now yeah, the science is make sure that both and arms are fully ventilated. Ventilation starts at the bottom of the pit, or what? Yep, we're good. We're ventilated. We ready? Where, what do you think we're at right now, Diesel? 32 minutes ish. Judging by how far the sun's traveled through the sky. I don't know how. Oh, there it is. What is it? 30 minutes, 45, 46, 47, 48. Man, my gauge is way off. By what, two minutes? Two minutes, man. Should have been listening to the buzz and got the bugs closer. All right, unhook me. Anytime we gotta unload this giant winch line, you know a party's about to start. So as you can see, if you look at the semi truck right here, our biggest risk right now is once we are able to start pulling it, which we're still not even there yet, but once we get there, the truck is gonna wanna tip and that hay has a high center of gravity. So if we tip the truck over with the hay, that's not good. That's a lot of money in hay sitting right there.
up in here and somehow lost some tension due to probably a cable breaking. Let's have a look. I found the culprit. Looks like we had a weak link, guys. Hey, I found the problem. Looks like a bouquet of flowers. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to look like that. Could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, it's not supposed to look like this. That is absolutely correct. We are. That's the first time we've broken the big winch line. That's, yeah. that's pretty gnarly. And it wasn't even like rubbing on anything, no weird friction, it was just too much weight. So now we gotta fix our line, put the hook back on it, and then double up the winch line, because this single business isn't working. And the one trip we go on that we didn't bring any tools. Luckily, we're close to Jim's farm and we're gonna need a grinder, some wrenches. You got a grinder at the farm? Yeah. Tools. Uh, broke the cable. Did it move at all? No. Not even budging. All right, let's uh, fix our cable. Drinks are on me. Well, actually, they're gonna be on those uh, muddy boots here in a second. Whatever, whatever else he needs to wash. All right, suck it. Man, if only we had like freaking brush or something. You know? Like I'm the. <laughs> All right, we got pretty much everything we need to fix the winch line. We got to put the hook basically back on after where it broke, and then we got to cut the broken, broken section off and then reclamp it back together. Um, using these cable clamps isn't ideal, but it's all we have here technically to you know put a hook on the end of a cable you're supposed to use basically a permanent like metal fixture that smashes it all together nope only we're gonna talk about the time this was the first pull went way too easy of course that truck is buried there's a good chance that if, when we start double snatch blocking it if it doesn't start moving um we're gonna be unloading hay here which sucks tell you what when the, cable the, ca the cable snapped no i don't want to get too into the weeds on that Okay. You're in luck. I never understood it. That's why I never. <laughs> Dave said it to me. Don't believe it. Don't put that on me. I've never said that before. That was an Uncle John saying for sure. Why I never said that. You tried using it again. <laughs> All right, let's uh, try this again. We're gonna snatch block it. So let's grab Big Juan out of the back of this. All right, snatch block time. We're gonna try just a, a double line this time real quick. If that feels like it's not gonna work, then we'll switch over to a triple line, which means two pulleys. And right now we're just gonna try to use one. Basically, winch line's gonna come out of the back of the truck on the winch to the cable and the pulley, which is gonna be sitting in the middle, and back to itself. How's it going, Hunter? Oh, yes, pulling cables. That's my jam.
time to try the old snatch blockaroo. Not really budging. Hook up to the record. Now the snatch block gets its turn for glory. So, pulling the truck forward like we wanted to is not gonna work. And the reason why we're trying to pull it forward is because there's a much more solid ground over here where we can pull from, but then we're just trying to pull it through this soupy wet area. So, we're gonna reposition, pull around back, and try to pull it out the way that it came in because there is kind of some dry spots over there, not nearly as good as over here, but it should be decent enough and less resistance to be able to pull it that way. So, it's kind of our only option right now our biggest issue is we can't have there's nowhere to anchor to so the winch truck just keeps on pulling even with the tractor hooked to it so uh before we end up having to hook a semi or something to that or more equipment we're going to try pulling from the back feels decent but it's still just so soft that it's pulling all this dead weight just into the mud pit. That's what I'm talking about, hands! Finally made some progress with this big old stuck truck. Freaking 80,000 pound load, maybe more. You can see we've got uh, our cables, two cables tied onto the back of the trailer frame. Those go out here to a big single line, which then goes to our snatch block. Then obviously the snatch block pulls back to itself and into the truck. But this is, dude, look how deep this is. Got super singles now. This truck is. Uh, 
fell asleep at the wheel three, three times and been intact with these two. Yeah. Oh yeah, he lost he lost all privileges, right? Look at this. That's why she, she wasn't going forward. It was just stuck. I got a little arrogant when we first got here, like, ah, oh, it should be a breeze. Definitely, definitely was not as easy as it looked. That truck was stuck. All right, guys that's it that's a wrap uh, the truck is out the tractors out it was a little complicated we broke some winch line which is very rare that doesn't happen very often which means it was a really heavy load so now is the part where we're not going to tell you how long it took us but if you guessed at the beginning of the video and dropped a comment below if you haven't done that yet make sure you do drop a comment because in the next video we're going to reveal the exact hours and minutes that it took us to get this job done today so make sure you drop your comment below and uh, buckle up because next vlog is also going to be a really good one like i said i've got three, maybe four different trucks and recovery vehicles that we're gonna be revealing to you guys over the next couple of weeks. We're growing the fleet like crazy. Got some really cool stuff coming, some really cool recoveries. So buckle up, subscribe if you wanna win one of my toys and stay tuned because party's just getting started.